So I'm not sure quite how well my phone is in the hold where it's sitting. But I'm at a uh, park called Freestone in Gilbert. It's a fairly dynamic water system. There's a lot of bluegill, tilapia, uh, shad, regular minnows, etc. In, in this ecosystem. It's mostly catfish in this lake. I've never seen a bass come out of here. But I have a couple hours before I have to do some other stuff and visit with my kids. So um, I used to come here a lot more, but I don't primarily go for catfish, so it's kind of a rare occasion these days. But I wanted to speak a little bit about local pond dynamics and uh, when you're going to a waterway and you're getting ready to fish. So some of the dynamics of going about fishing a place like a pond. You always want to look and see obvious structure first. You want to be observant when you come to a pond. You don't want to immediately just go out and say, oh, I think I'll fish this spot because of this. It's not always going to help you get uh, fish. It's not always going to help you know what's going on if you just go and sit and do something. It, it it lends itself to be fraught with disaster in that way. So, that's point number one. Point number two. I just recently started using cast nets. Now, a good way to have a gauge on any body of water, especially local ponds, is to throw a cast net. If not for the purpose of catching bait, just to see what kind of force there is. Because cast nets will and have caught in full size fish of all the varieties that are in a lake. Uh, crawdads, if they're in a lake, which they're not in Freestone. Shads, minnows, uh, muzzles get trapped in them. You get a very good picture of what is available for a fish to eat uh, in a pond by doing that, let alone you get examples of what to use and you can see what you would like to use. So I take a cast net no matter what. Uh, I use life bait 90% of the time now. It just inherently works better than any other bait that I would use. Uh, and I'm a swim, a swim bait fanatic. I love my swim baits, but I'm giving the bass and other fish that are in a pond or a lake what they naturally eat in its natural form. Uh, and that's point number three. When you go to a local pond, always try to represent what they naturally eat. Always, without exception. It garners you better results than getting those either trashy, cheap ass lures or those flashy, you think they can't ignore it type lures. Flashy is for sales, okay? Flashy only belongs on a lure if it is a piece of the representation of the forge at hand, like a threadfin shad is more shiny than uh, more shiny than a gizzard shad, for instance. Now I have a bull shad 4x4, which has got the small lip on it, and it goes about half a foot deep, and that's it, that represents a gizzard shad, and it looks beat to shit, and that's how it's made, okay? It gets me hits from bass that would otherwise not touch a bait. It's important to match as well as possible. Bluegill baits, shad baits, minnow baits, like the stick baits, the jerk baits, these things work because they represent exactly the type of things that they eat, as long as you know what they eat, which is why I take a cast net. Number four, <laughs> after you've looked at the obvious structure, Look at the not-so-obvious points on the lake. Points. If your pond you're going to has points, perfect spots to start in general because points, fish will line up around that part of uh, the area more so than others. Freestone is a little bit different. There's points of reference that are different in this pond which make it easy for me to find catfish quick. There's a double-sided waterfall. One side of the waterfall is 
really deep next to the waterfall in a gradual slope and then it's kind of flat the rest of the way to a certain point. But there's points on this lake too that do fairly well. I like to get on fish fairly quick. I know that the sides of the uh, waterfalls here produce. And a lot of other people come to this pond. Excuse me. They sit and they throw the standard worms, chicken livers, dough baits. Yeah, there's carp in here. Yeah, carp will hit uh, the life bait. But they hit the dough balls more. I prefer to get things that eat the life bait quick and are big and nasty and want to hurt you. I eat really huge catfish. There are flatheads in here up words of 40 pounds. I have seen them pulled out of here. They have a tendency to hit the bigger bluegill more than anything else. And hot dog. Hot dog works very well. Hot dog's one of those things that's point number five. Always take and I've, I've considered saying this for a long time but I wanted it to be kind of a secret weapon so to speak. It doesn't matter if it's salt water or fresh water. If you throw a piece of hot dog you're going to catch something. I don't know what it is about that nasty ass meat, but it fucking it pulls fish in like there's no fucking tomorrow. For some odd reason, it just pulls fish in, and uh, I keep it all the time. And I'll let it sit in my bag in my car and ferment. It it gets even stinkier. It gets a little easier to hold on the hook until it goes really bad, and it just gets soft. And that's when I throw it, or I'll throw it for chum. Okay. A hot dog is just unbelievable. It catches every fucking species of fish. Because a lot of people will cut it up in, in its unreheated form. They're already steamed and cooked meat. They, they have to cook it to produce it, okay? They go through these machines and steams as it's been, been formed in the casing. I've seen the whole process. It's fucking disgusting. Trust me. I will. I, if I can avoid eating a hot dog, I will avoid it. And I love fucking hot dogs, but... Dude, it's nasty shit. It is, when it's reheated and, and chopped up, just badass. I put ocean salt in a Ziploc with quarter-inch bits. I'll slice it lengthwise one way, lay them flat, slice them lengthwise again, and do quarter-inch bits off of that. And I can take a pack of hot dogs that's like 99 cents at fries and get three, four hundred bits out of that. And it's only that much that it takes to catch a fairly big fish. I've gotten a five pound bass out of a Chandler pond on a quarter inch piece of hot dog. It simply is phenomenal what it does. So I always take hot dog if nothing else will, will work, including natural bait, I'll throw hot dog. It works every time. So that's some points. Uh, sixth and final point for this particular video take a variety of uh, rods if not two that suit every need you need don't take a specific a specific rod uh, for one specific technique don't if you're going to a lake and you're on a boat and you have space for you know seven eight rods 15 like some people do then do that but if you're going to a pond don't take more than two just don't do it I take a medium light to a medium heavy and an ultra light. The reason I take the ultra light is if there's big enough panfish in that pond, I can catch those panfish and have fun doing that, or I can catch them and chop them up and use them for chop bait. It's a dual purpose. Medium light is a decent all around action, regardless of how long it is, because it can give you a feel for how uh, the size of the fish fight in the pond. It can give you a gauge based on, on how you're fighting it with a medium light. If I know that the fish in the pond are bigger than a certain amount, I'll take my medium heavy or my heavy out. Uh, right now, I don't have a heavy spinning rod. I gave that one away. So I have a saltwater pen, uh, Fierce 2, for medium heavy to heavy. I need to get another heavy rod because what I go for and where I go for, I have a tendency to get uh, fairly large channel cats and bass. So I usually keep a medium light to a medium heavy. I'm going to go ahead and just graduate and get a heavy this time for that, the pen. And I have a medium light outfit already, but 
with me today I have my ultralight and my medium light so it does enough for me to be able to fish this pond so just take those things into consideration all those points across the board watch this video multiple times if you have to to iron those points in your brain because if you do that and go to a pond you're gonna have a much higher success rate than those people that just go in mass and sit next to each other and just toss something out it, it just doesn't work good that way you have to have brain power and give yourself knowledge by observation on a pond for it to really truly work for you tight lines